Yes, both long COVID and ME patients often suffer from muscular complaints, including muscle pain, um, post-exertional malaise, and reduced exercise capacity. But what pathophysiological response could potentially provoke this symptomatic burden? Well, upon exertion, there's an increased uh, demand for oxygen delivery in order to match the increased rates of oxygen consumption. If this process is inefficient, however, so if too little oxygen and nutrients reach, for example, the skeletal muscle site, this may lead to overexertion and muscle fatigue. So zooming in at the muscle microvasculature. The amount of oxygen ultimately reaching the muscle site is dependent on local flow as well as diffusion, where every increase in diffusion distance negatively affects the amount of oxygen ultimately reaching the muscle mitochondria. So what we did, we tried measuring this blue layer of base membrane, which is mainly composed of collagen-4. On the left side, we can see three respective collagen-4 stainings, um, in which red displays the collagen-4, um, or the base membrane, and we can see, uh, if this works, for example here, sorry for the shaking, uh, well, we can see some capillaries. Um, but already when we look at the three different groups, we can, in the control groups, we can sort of identify the lumen space as well as the base membrane. Um, but in the long COVID and ME patients, it looks like these capillaries are sort of clocked up with collagen-4. Um, so after quantifying, we indeed saw that the base membrane was significantly thicker in both long COVID and ME patients, as well as a re reduction in the lumen space. And this may definitely um, affect the amount of perfusion uh, and diffusion of oxygen ultimately towards the skeletal muscle site. Zooming in even further, we've also performed electron microscopy, and this is a technique in which we are able to uh, visualize uh, different cellular components uh, at a very high magnification. Usually, a capillary looks something like this. We can identify the red blood cell, the lumen space, approximately three endothelial cells covering the capillary, as well as a single layer of base membrane. In our patients, however, we saw some uh, abnormali abnormalities consisting of base membrane thickening as well as base membrane reduplications, signs of endothelial activation and stress, as we can see by the thickening of the endothelial cells, um, as well as the presence of vacuoles, and lastly, even signs of endothelial cell degeneration. We can see that endothelial cells have been thickened, and there's no more interior inside. So, to conclude, um, we've shown signs of reduced lumen space, endothelial activation and dysfunction, and base membrane thickening, um, which may likely affect the amount of diffusion and perfusion of oxygen, ultimately, um, hypothetically, uh, leading to too little oxygen and nutrients reaching the muscle site, and maybe even a buildup of waste products, which may predispose to fatigue in these patients. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for this really excellent presentation and very interesting data. Some very burning question. <laughs> yeah, <A> very burning. <laughs> Immediately and... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how, how specific is this? Can it be a diagnostic test? So how specific is it? Yeah, we're now, because we can sort of see almost like a black and white distinction, also when we uh, take, for example, like the percentages, so to account for the capillary size, but we're now working on um, to include like uh, more samples to see whether we can maybe, in combination with questionnaires or whatsoever, whether this can maybe in the future become a diagnostic marker, but we need more research to fully confirm this. Perfect. I think further questions go to this young woman, to her poster.